Hello, I am David Dibby Parker. This is Programming Today I Learned, Episode 7, Looking at Svelte. Today, we're going to go ahead and extract out that nav. That'll be very brief. And then we're going to introduce our first store. And what is a Svelte store and how we can use it. And we're going to use it to sign in to our form. Um, or to show that we've signed it to our form, rather. So let's go ahead and look at the code. So the first thing is we're going to add a new component under Components Navbar Nav. We're going to update our layout to have that nav. We're going to introduce a new uh, file called stores.js uh, under shared. And then we're going to go ahead and change our sign in route. So now we're going to import from nav, from components, navbar nav, and then drop it in right here. Uh, again, this is from my aliases because I don't like to write out the whole word components all the time. So that's just a simple alias. The navbar is our sim, same nav as before with one major difference, two major differences really. Now we have a script part above and we're gonna import user from shared stores, which we'll look at momentarily. And then we'll be using the Svelte syntax for if else. And this is not, oops, let's go ahead and there we go. And if we're not signed in, we're going to go ahead and show the register and sign in. And if we are, we're going to have another one for signing out. Uh, same classes, etc. This one is to do. We're not going to sign out yet. And we're going to use this weird dollar syntax. Uh, even though we're importing user, we're going to say dollar user. And do they have, this is user have a JF, JWT um, property on it. And if we do, then we're going to show the sign out. So this is the syntax that you're going to use to get the value from the store. So this is saying, what is the value of the store? Otherwise, this is going to be providing a writable store, which provides us with functionality to set values on it, as well as subscribe to changes within that store. And we'll look at that within the API as well in just a moment. So in stores here, we're going to go import writable, because it's going to be a writable store from a Svelte store. And then we're just going to uh, export it as a constant out. And it's going to be a writable. And it's going to have a default value of an empty object. Very, very simple. But a lot more going on under the hood that we can look at later. So our sign-in form is going to be very, very much like the sign-up form. Um, nothing has changed at the very top. This is the confirmation from before. Uh, down here, we're going to go ahead and import our store. Uh, a user from our stores. Uh, the rest of this kind of thing is going to be the same. Here we're going to go ahead and we're going to have email password as our login for the form. I'm just going to say if it, if we're we're going to grab the session and we're going to check if we're in development mode. If we are, then we're going to go ahead and set the email and password. Uh, you can look at the server here for that, um, and you just have the node environment here. Um, and that's actually the wrong server. It's this one here. So we're passing in the node environment as accessed to the session. So that's just kind of like a way for me to be lazy uh, when I'm refreshing. I already have this filled in. Uh, I don't recommend pushing this to production or anything. It's just for your own sake. Um, passing up all of that. So we're going to have our submission to sign in. Again, this is exactly like the sign up. So if you haven't looked at that tutorial, you should. Um, we're submitting a post uh, to this endpoint here. We're going to do the same, but this is a diff slightly different endpoint, and we're going to pass in user with that email password. If we get a, a response back, we're going to set a success message to sign in, clear out our form, log out our JSON that we got back, and then call this user.set. Now this is, again, the, on the API of the writable within the Svelte store. And that's, we'll look at that in the documents in just a second. So we're just going to go ahead and put that whole return object onto the user store here. Otherwise, we're going to log out some errors. And we're going to have a nice little area for, we moved our success and error messages to the top using the same kind of flex class here. Um, and then we have our form. This form basically is mirrors the signup form. The only difference is that it calls the sign in. So everything else is the same. We're going to extrapolate all this out into components. Don't you worry. 
So let's go ahead and take a look at it in action. We are running our Rails backend, so this will, uh, will work. So if we're here, and I run sign in, you can see it submits, it had that little disable glow. Here's the log. You could see the AUD is unknown, uh, JWT is provided back, and then we have this user object as well. And right now I'm turning in email and ID. We will expand on that as well. That's been covered in the Rails application for signing in. And then you could see the nav bar up here, switch to sign out. And you could see our success message here says signed in. So normally you'll want to redirect uh, after you user just signed in to some page, uh, maybe somebody they're already trying to get to or the home page or whatever within your application. Now if I click sign out here, this hasn't been implemented yet. So that obviously doesn't work. And you'll see I have the sign in register shown back again. Uh, all of this is not a persistent login yet. So we need to do that. Uh, that's the next episode. We'll check out that in just a little bit. But for now, this is just a super short video on how you can use Writable Store. And specifically the Writable version, there's other stores types. You have Readable as well as Derived and Get here. Um, so it provides, you can have any value and then you can give it a setter method. Uh, and then have, there's a subscribe method. So if something changes on it, you can uh, check a look at that. And you can also do a, an update. Um, there's a lot of really interesting things you um, can unsubscribe as well. Uh, there's a lot of really interesting examples of different types of stores on uh, that have been applied to the using Svelte stores. Think of it kind of like um, you would maybe uh, React use effect or something like that maybe. Um, and it's kind of basically a global store. So it's, it's a way to keep things globally accessible from component to component so you don't have to pass them down as props. This can be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. You know, people are always afraid of global state, but in general, you're always gonna need global state on some, you know, way, shape, or level uh, with any kind of sizable application. And so just be cognizant of what you're doing and who's a subscriber and what's you know, what's being modified because of any kind of global state. So without further ado, we're going to end this episode. We'll take a look at persisting that login uh, from session to session uh, on the next episode. Like and subscribe. Thanks, guys.